I'm Robert E, aka Kentucky Kid. I really don't know what is going on, but all I know, the police are covering up for each other and they are trying to kill me. I was driving to Ochi, approaching the Dumbo Olin and Spongetown bypass. The stoplight was on red. The accident happened along the Spanish Town bypass in St. Catherine. The motorist says he was on his way to Ocho Rios in St. Anne when the police car hit into his vehicle. He just told me the whole thing that happened. He was traveling, he stopped at the stoplight. The police ran and smashed his car. So it started from then. It's a simple fender bender. A vehicle stopped in front of me and stopped behind the vehicle right here, so I don't know what really happened. It's the last thing I know. It happened so fast. The officers say they are still investigating the matter and have not yet apportioned the blame to any party. The first time he came in and he spoke to us, it was evident that he was really concerned. He, it appeared as if he was in fear of his safety. I know I can't get any justice. All my car is going to fix, all my health is going to take care of. I'm lucky that TVJ was on the scene the night of the accident. Lest the police would have charged me that night and tried to tell a lie. He had mentioned that police had threatened him at his home and they were intimidating him. He said he went to the um, legal aid lawyers. They advised him to put a tape um, camera in the house because he does DJ stuff, he knows what to do and that's what he did. Um, after installing the camera, he came to me three days later showing me some video footage of what appeared to be police um, um, you know, um, manhandling him along with his wife. It appeared they were holding him and, 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 and pushing him around in a room and they were asking him questions. I was eight months pregnant. Policeman pushed me down with my husband. That time I got hurt my belly. Police wanted to kill him, so I want to save him. They came to his house and they beat him. They beat him and they beat his wife, her stomach, her back, and all of that was wails from where they beat her. And he told me that he was having so much pain from where they stomped him. He was going to the bathroom, passing blood. He said that members of the police team did not want him to continue with the case, did not want him to raise raise his concern with the, the, the higher authorities and that was you know the means they were using to get him to stop. I can't get no justice from no one in Jamaica. All I know everywhere I go for justice in the police force there is someone there trying to kill me or someone there trying to set me up with the police. So I would like the whole world to check this, listen this and know that if I'm dead or anything happened to me, it's the Jamaican police carry out that works or that order. The Robert Hill case perhaps is a, a nadir for Jamaica because Robert went and, and caught the people on tape. You can see them, their faces, you can see them beating him and his wife. You can see them threatening him. And he took that tape to the police high command. And they came back and killed him. It was too much. It's too much for me to bear. Up at this point, I cannot believe that he's dead. That he's gone just because of a car. Residents of Nagahead, Portmore and lawmen remain at odds this evening as they continue to protest the police's killing of an influential member of the community yesterday. The irate residents continued their protest over the killing of 34-year-old Ezron Morris, otherwise called Dante. We want some answers! We want answers! Last year, over 250 people were killed by the police 
And a large percentage of those killings were extrajudicial. In other words, they were plain murders. Of course, communities protest because it's over five killings by the police a week uh, last year. Hardly a week goes by, you don't see communities protesting vigorously and, and people crying and, and showing intense grief because somebody they feel has been killed wrongfully. They kick out the door and go straight into the bathroom and kill my son. He was murdered! The situation is, is appalling. It's unbelievable, quite frankly. The data is hard to come by, but we, we think that we have the highest rate of extrajudicial killings per capita here. And the police operate in depressed communities and with impunity, complete impunity. You do not find the killing, the, the extrajudicial killings taking place in the upper residential areas of Kingston among the white and, and brown people. It happens in the inner city. It is in the inner city among the black, poorer people that the police uh, are able to kill people in the indiscriminate way in which they do and not face punishment. If you look in the bathroom, you were sitting on the toilet because there's a bullet wound in the middle of his hand. So obviously it's in the first shot was in the air, then it fell off the toilet and you get the other one on the ground and the other one on the ground. Okay, you can see the other two bullets all. I am the resurrection of mine. In the last 10 years, 1,900 of our Jamaican citizens officially have been killed by the police. More than 1,900. In that time, one policeman has been convicted of manslaughter and he has been freed on appeal. The lawmen converged near the Hanotown police station and even as a large contingent of soldiers and police officers made their way to the station, gunshots could be heard in the background. The area was tense from as early as midday Monday and according to the police they were on an operation to capture known gunmen who were hiding close to the border of Hanotown and Denham Town. But it was in Denham Town where the operation turned deadly. Start from this. Everything fell from outside. Traces of blood and gunshot riddled walls spoke to the intensity of the shooting incident. We were unable to confirm the location where the three policemen were shot and injured. However, it's reported that one was shot in the hand, one in the leg and back, and the other in the neck. My name is Renito de Cordova Valentina Adams and I joined the Jamaica Constabulary Force and I spent 41 years and three months there. Youngsters start criminality at a very young age. No one controls him or her. Renito Adams is a, a senior uh, superintendent of police who is known for his vigorous action against criminals and therefore he's highly regarded by sections of the population. He has also been accused and has come to court, but acquitted, over extrajudicial killings. If I kill people, then it would seem to me that I would want to say, if criminals kill people out there, and I were sent for them along with my men, and they wanted to kill me too, then I have to react in a particular way that anybody who died would have been a criminal, not my men or I, or the general society. It is simple as that. The fact is that this is probably one of the most difficult and dangerous places to police in the world because the number of illegal firearms that are on the streets is enormous and that's a, a situation that's developed over the past 30 years. One can understand the police get exasperated because what, what has happened here is that a lot of uh, uh, persons accused of crimes and guilty of crimes brought to court, but the victims, the, the witnesses rather, are killed. Uh, and they get off. And the police get frustrated uh, by uh, known criminals being released back on the streets after weeks or months uh, to do the same thing again. 
So they take the law into their own hands. In Jamaica, it's every minute that the policeman is in criminal confrontation with gunmen. And therefore, the statistics must reveal that if you are in a situation, a confrontation with criminal elements 24 hours a day, then obviously the statistics where policemen being killed and criminals being killed must be higher than anywhere else in the world. We have the wild project I go on as I can see. Machine man. man. The general is no? the general machine man. This is the man of them murder. Go report. And I come, 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 police murder him. Put a gun for them. I saw them do it at Jamaica, yeah. you know. For them want to, you know, pay have a gun. And them, and them man come back, come no? shoot up on the wall. Yeah, man. Yeah, right. yeah. man. Yeah. See the, the wall there, man. Yeah. Yeah, them bust it back in their face. And a picture. To the wild worker and him did response to them workers. So for him dead, it was stagnant. We say we want to do our community, eh? We want to lift it, lift the development. We want to lift up the community, lift it up. As when I tell you, see the worker, we are trying to get rid of the zinc fence. Zinc fence, yeah. We want some more house around to the land there to lift up the community. To make it come back on the map and make the people that you know see say. And they see a machine, man. I said machine. That they brought him, them kill him, it's stagnant. All this time we just come around. And them don't like you. I'm throwing at the jeep. I'm on top of them don't like nobody around here. So them just treat you. Them say down to the dog a rat bat. So you must know sir. Nobody. Them not like uh, if them classify the dog as rat, but we are nobody. Free the police. When I see them in the night, I mean, walk, man, you're nervous, man. Me pass, me, me pass the gun, man, them. Me all right. Because them not <laughs> just there about the police. Them just kill you. You know that police is the most criminal in the camp, man. Them do all it, man, work. Peace Management Initiative is a group of civil society people put in place to head off and defuse community violence. A lot of the conflict is between groups inside of communities over, strictly over turf. Anyway, we listen to them and get the rival groups to talk to each other across the table. Things have been quiet since he's come back and taken over the leadership over the last three months. Things have been very quiet. All right. Um, things have been quiet. But prior to that, uh, under the previous leader, there were four killings. Uh, a couple of them right here in the bar. What the police and, and some people in the Ministry of National Security are saying is that they are willing to prepare to lump corner crews with the criminal gangs and talking about there being 268 criminal gangs in Jamaica. This is a mistake. You cannot treat corner crews in the same way you treat a criminal gang. There is no warrant for no police to come arrest a youth around here. For them warrant is for the shoot and kill and question acts after. That's how them treat ghetto people. That's how garrison life is all about. It is the poorer class of people, the black people in the inner cities of Jamaica, who are the ones who are victimized by the police, who are dying at the hands of the police. Ricardo Scott them take him half, pull him off of the gate down there. Take him up here. While the, 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 the Carlton said, said to the police, them say, remember you killed one already and one alive and you go up with this one. So while him up here, he made the explosion and when he come back, he realized it, it recall how Scott get shot. The accounts, as I say, almost invariably follow a pattern. Either that the police are challenged or the um, person who it is alleged challenged them is found 
clutching a weapon. I, I use the very words which are invariably used. I am Leonie Davis, um, the sisters of Ricardo Scott, and I'm in Morant Bay in front of the police station, and I have a copy of the report, what the police said happened to the two guys. A team of police was at Summit Road where six gunmen were seen. They immediately opened fire at the lawmen and a gun battle in use. Two of a gunmen who engaged the police in a shootout were fatally shot and firearm taken from one of them. Each time we keep hearing the same reports. Police engaged a man in a shootout. Firearm was recovered, a revolver, three live rounds. One of whom was found with a 38 Davis Industry semi-automatic pistol with three rounds of ammunition. It's a formula um, of uh, an account of events that is quite hackneyed and uh, has led to great skepticism over the thing. It's just a strategy them use to get out young people kill the young youth them. And you don't have to have a gun. Then we give you one. It's always amazing how when you hear of the incidents, the residents always have a story totally different from what the police are saying. On the news, it was said that they were called about um, six men traveling with arms. And uh, there was a shootout and uh, four of the men run while two was being shot. The news said that a .38 revolver was taken from one of the victims. No. Even speaking to you, I'm telling you that is a lie. If you're really going to cost me my life, that's a lie. Big fat lie. What I saw was an execution. Frankly, we don't accept um, that all of these accounts are true. We think that some of these extrajudicial killings are in fact unlawful and amount to executions by the police acting as judge and jury. My brother, he was a good boy. He worked at one stop at hardware. He goes to work every day. So I don't see how he could be a gunman. We have a licensed murder in force. Where he know say if Tom Strokes is seen with a M16, a nine or whatever, and him arrest him, uh, in libel, it, it most likely he will get off because the drag out the lung and thing and so most like. So um, the 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 uh, officers, a lot of our police officers over time, be, they became hardened by the circumstances, and so in their league. There is an unwritten rule. Why, once you see a man with a gun, he's dead. The point is not to, make, to give the policeman on the corner a bigger gun. The point is to engage law-abiding citizens across the country. But that's going to require that they are able to trust the police and the police are not abusing their rights. We have to acknowledge that the JCF is riven with corruption and crime and we have to make some very difficult decisions around well, what we're going to do about it. How are we going to protect the citizens of the country? How are we going to protect the good police, the good civilians who work with the police? How can we make their job easier? And how can we make the public trust the good police? We think that they should be disbanded. We think that the force needs to die, disappear, on a day to be set, and one minute later the new service, police service, be born again. Perhaps. One, one option is to shut the thing down and start again, but that's a very expensive and radical option. But in my view, looking at the extent of corruption and crime within the organisation, it has to be a, a one possibility. If you gave them equipment, if you gave them the laws, right, and they were not reformed, they continue to be corrupt, then obviously it's time that you dismantle and um, abandon that police force and form a new one. But the problem is, how can you get clean wine out of dirty bottle? Jamaica is a society that has been so rotten. The Jamaica Constabulary Force has released updates on investigations into 11 fatal shootings and incidents between 2007 and 2009. 
Among them is the case of Robert Hill, also known as Kentucky Kid from Ivy Green News in Kingston, who was killed during an alleged shootout last night. Here, he was there. He's a broken car park under this big mango tree. After next day, I carry her early morning to here. I saw big here blood, a lot of blood. So I realized that time he was died. A lot of blood. We do know now that the file is with the DPP's office, but this is three months after Robert is killed. This is eight months after he took to the police high command the tape of himself and his wife being beaten. It's far too long and needs much more urgent action than it is getting. I must confess that I don't think we have processed that one yet, but in any event, sir, yeah. I would not be able to comment on the specifics. You know, it wouldn't be appropriate, and you could understand that. But because we are in the course of investigating the thing ourselves, I'd rather not express any opinion or give you any conclusions at this time, but um, this much I can tell you. Uh, the circumstances uh, in which Robert Hill met his death, uh, at the very least, highly suspicious. These people need to be charged. They're caught on tape beating Robert Hill. Yes, I would like for them to go to prison. I would like for a thorough investigation to be done. If my son was killed wrongfully and justly, they need to go to jail. After he died, nobody protected me. I'm afraid to live here, so I'm gonna go back to Japan. I have a Jamaican and Japanese baby. He's a baby now, so I'm happy about it. A mother is saying her last goodbyes to her son. <laughs> Kenrick Jacks was shot dead on December 26. Make Kenrick with example show to each and every one of the youth them, that they may learn from this mistake. Put it down. Kenrick and his 18-year-old friend, Venroy McDermott, died in a hail of bullets. Fired by their own country's security forces, the police and the army. As Kenrick's coffin is being loaded for the journey to church, a single gunshot is fired. Oh, a farewell salute in defiance of those who killed him. At least every other day in Kingston, police shoot someone dead. That's how the police operate. Dr Carolyn Gomes is the executive director of Jamaicans for Justice. We have cases in our files, the 14-year-old Lance Zab who was shot eating a piece of cornbread. At autopsy, he was still clutching the cornbread in his hand. We have Rennie Lyons, five years old, shot by a policeman who's running down a man who supposedly has a spliff, a ganja spliff. And he's running after him and firing. Rennie's in her yard, he blows her head away. <laughs> in Jamaica's capital, Kingston, to be young, male, black and poor is an extremely dangerous combination. On one side are the armed gangs which control the streets, and on the other, the island nation's lethal security forces. Kingston has a long history of violence and crime, but when in the 70s and 80s rival politicians looking for extra votes supplied arms to the street gangs, the conflict took an ugly turn. 
In the past decade, more than 14,000 people have been murdered in Jamaica. The vast majority gang-related, pushing this island nation up to number three for per capita murders in the world rankings. There's a recent strategic review that, that says the police are involved in murder for hire, corruption, selling guns, drug running. You know, it's not to say that they the entire police force, it never is. But the fact of the matter is that the ones in the police force who are trying to do a good job are allowing this to continue by their silence and by their complicity. While the violence is worse in poorer communities, it's not confined to them. Across the capital, Kingston, in a more affluent area, the Ray family is also seeking answers. When I heard they were crying and said that Fabian got shot, I never dreamed it was the police. I, I thought that it may be a crossfire from somebody and, and he got it. When I heard it's the police, I said, why? How police could have shot Fabian? And when I heard the circumstances, I said, boy, I used to hear and I used to see it. Things happen and have my doubts, but no, it's, it is on my doorstep. This spot marks where 25-year-old Fabian Ray was shot dead in the middle of the day by two policemen as he was walking to his sister's house to watch football. Too old. After them shooting, them take him up. I try to put him in a chunk, but it's like he's never dead yet. Or they never have enough time to put him in a chunk. Or what? I'm too tall. too tall. So they put him back down and shoot him again. And then put him, pull the back door to, and pull him in and drive past him house. Cause I'm a go to him house. And drive past him go, and, and go on with him. I cried night and day. I had a nervous breakdown. Because he is my last son. Out of, out, out, out of nine kids, he is the last son. And he's the first one that died. But it's not just on the street that the police are considered lethal and corrupt. There's recognition of that fact within the highest levels of the force. It is a serious, significant problem that we have police officers who are basically criminals and prepared to conduct criminal acts and corrupt acts uh, for their own means. And that's just judging by the investigations I've conducted. Former Scotland Yard policeman Mark Shields was brought in four years ago to tackle the country's gang violence problems and help clean up the force. How big a threat are the bad cops to the system right now? It's an enormous threat because the bad cops, however few or many there are, undermine everything that the rest of us are trying to do. And we have to live with that every single day because we may take 10 steps forward of good policing. Uh, we may take 10 steps forward in terms of improving trust and confidence with the community. And then something happens and we're back to we're square one. And that's the, the constant problem. It's a struggle between good and bad. It's the day after Kenrick Jack's funeral and his parents are taking me on the short walk to where he was killed. This is very day. Right here. Where you see this mark here? Right here, right there. So, two clips done, and then we have fire from a next clip, and it half uh, couple shot will come out of it. Done for the two little boy, them right here, so. My son get the most, so I'm going to go look for him. The whole time, stomach full of shot, and him foot them down here, so full of shot. And for sure, you owe them wicked enough. You know. The soldier use him foot in him throat and fire the shot in him stomach like this and him head. For killing. Certified that him dead. Right here. Vehicles up and down this street bear testament to the firepower unleashed that night. These photos were taken after the young men were shot. Just fire shot over people head to for them leave the corner before them do the murder. So them have ample time could have do it out hurt the youth and them just never want to kill somebody. But not everyone fled. 
This man, we'll call Rico, couldn't run. He was too close, but just out of sight. He feared he'd become the third victim if he showed himself. Did you hear what the police said to them? Did you hear what they said to the police? The police, them, don't say nothing to the youth. Them, them just come up, the light is shining on them, them spin at all. As them spin at all, it's just shot them get in same time. The official police record of the shooting states... The patrol team accosted two men along St Patrick Road who they saw acting suspiciously. On seeing the patrol team, one of the men pulled a firearm and pointed it in the direction of the patrol team. The soldier then took evasive action and opened gunfire, hitting both men who fell to the ground. Rico confirms the younger man who was with Kenrick Jacks had a gun, but he says it was never pointed at police. Why do you think they shot them? It's the gun with them so they made it up, and them spinning up. Did you see a gun? Did they have a gun? Yeah, they have one gun. Did they point it at police? No, they have it so I'm foot. They not get for fire. So he had the gun pointed down? Right down at the ground. Kenrick's parents believe the island security forces are a law unto themselves. So many times for a policeman, for a policeman or a soldier man shot, take the out 16 or 17 shot, that is total murder. That couldn't be a law in a Jamaica for your gamma. Because even a police tell me, say, man, I run and I shoot off a police and when they're dead, they never get 17 shot. The police are not in the habit of shooting persons dozens of times. You shoot in self-defense and once you have shot someone sufficient to stop the individual from posing an immediate threat to you, then your next obligation is to ensure the person is rushed to a place where he can get medical attention. Mark Shields is less defensive of Jamaica's police. I've acknowledged that there are cases that are very suspicious in terms of fatal shootings. There are others because we have a, a country that's full of ruthless gunmen that um, are quite legitimate in terms of that people here, uh, gunmen are prepared to take on the police. A smoke for me and you because my last smoke this. What are you talking about? I'm going to hold a stiff here, my old. Bobby! Last smoke this. Until we see you again. I'm going to go rest and comfort of yourself. Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. With two senior policemen having two versions of how Jamaica's police force behave, it's no wonder the family of Kenrick Jacks have a clear sense more trouble is on the way. At even the same time after they killed my son, they came here and asked for my rest of children. So I would like to ask them now why they want my rest of children. She knows speaking out is a risk, but it's all she can do for her son as she holds out no hope his death will be investigated. Right now to how my son died, it gives me no courage to really to talk to the police because they should do that from my son died and they didn't do that. It doesn't take long on the streets of Kingston to see how the police operate. What, um, sorry, can you tell me what's happening? The, them are searching you, them are searching you. So them don't keep the people there. If nobody never out there, them shoot them. The police claim to find some weed or marijuana at this roadside stall and two men are arrested. While the two men are being loaded onto the truck, fearful of what's to come, a soldier warns Angela that she is now a marked woman. She's angry. When the soldier them say that, that means anyone tell them see me, that means to say them will shoot me. 
Cause I'm a cousin bad when I go on. That means to say my life in jeopardy with them now. Cause them wrong. What them do them wrong. We poor people and we call poor people them treat you like dogs. Police know there was at least one remaining witness to the fatal shooting of Angela's son. And the locals here fear that the police think the witness may be one of these young men. George was lucky and is granted bail after being charged with possessing marijuana. No, why them pick on me because I'm directly say I'm my style. I was dealing with ganja at my style, which I never did. That's why they really pick at me. On the street here, there is anger, but also an acceptance of the way police operate, planting evidence from marijuana to guns. Well, the police them deal with drastic, they deal with the rough. They deal with like long as Somalia, Iraq. They have no right for those deal with so. But those two with us with a day now, they get apart. That's why the way them deal with it. They behave like that because it's the ghetto. Yeah, because the ghetto, them deal with the more uptown people more better. Like true, most of them, that's what I say, poor is a crime, so that's what we deal like a dog. In addition to the police killings, nearly as many people have been murdered in the past two years as in the 40 years of conflict in Northern Ireland. Scabby Dread has family in the two main rival gangs that control the city's downtown district. He's taking me through the buffer zone. I can walk freely here only because I am with him. But it's not that long ago that no one could walk here. This was once the front line. You couldn't stand up, you got to run across or clear the street. Empty, keep it empty, cause pay a shot to and from. But everything come down now, we live in one and love in. While there may be new respect for old rivals, that does not extend to the police force. The police, they don't make nothing better, they make it worse. Cause they angle you anyway. Then beat you up, haul you off to jail. Mash up your house, mash up your place, treat you like a criminal. Just through your poor and you're not rich and live up Beverly Hills. You live in the ghetto, in the area. They try to keep you down. They don't want to see you come out. Many criminals in Jamaica do not hesitate to shoot at the police and they do not hesitate to pump dozens of bullets into their victims. In all instances, save and except a very few which are investigated discovered and prosecuted. The shootings committed by the police are done in circumstances that are justifiable and necessary. But the list of accusations against the police force is so long and so serious that calls continue to be made for it to be disbanded. We are on record saying that they should just disband the force. You know, at, uh, obviously not tomorrow because you need a police force, but you, you set out a timeline in which the, the Jamaica Constabulary Force, which has lost the trust of the people. There have been calls for the police force to be disbanded. That's one option, and uh, there are times when I can, I can have some sympathy with that, but the fact is we still have to police the country. So if on the 31st of March we disband the JCF, what do we replace it with? How do we go about that process? It's a very radical step. And at times I can see some, as I say, I have some sympathy for it. I think that reform must start from within, though. While police, good and bad, are on the front line, it's the island's politicians who also hold sway over the gangs that rule the streets. Understanding the rules of engagement. Omar Davies is Jamaica's former finance minister. He acknowledges politicians were responsible for arming the gangs, but says that was the past. 
I think there's no question that there was an extended period in which there was a, a political involvement, to use a, a neutral term, for um, in terms of, of supporting gangs, etc., who then would defend political turf. Um, that period has passed for a variety of reasons. One, some of the main protagonists, politicians, have moved on. Two is that you you are mistaken if you believe you can arm someone for political reasons and constrain and restrict them to use the arms for those reasons. He may not arm them, but Omar Davies does still support at least one game. In his electorate is the clubhouse of the Black Roses, a gang he openly admits financing. He pays them to keep the streets clean of rubbish. To give someone who is a, a community leader, a former gang leader, to give them assignments, it means that you're supporting uh, criminality. But at the same time, not just the go Jamaica government, but there are international organizations, there's a peace management initiative, etc. And they, they will tell you that there's no way to bring about peace if you, if you ignore those who can create war. Uh, people just um, disobey me. Maintain a courageous calm, whatever we do, in the face of dangerous calm, I really feel. Engaging with the gangsters may be one option, but with the high murder rate and police accused of extrajudicial killings, there seems little chance that peace will come to this Caribbean capital anytime soon. We have some excellent police, some very professional officers who are doing a really good job, and they want, as most of Jamaica wants, a first-class police service. Unfortunately, there are many people within it who either don't want that or are part of the problem. We work for an organisation that is a police service, but it's also, in parts, a criminal organisation in itself as well. I'm Robert Hill, a.k.a. Kentucky Kid. I really don't know what is going on, but all I know, the police are covering up for each other and they are trying to kill me. I was driving to Ochi, approaching the Dumbo Olin and Spongetown bypass. The stoplight was on red. The accident happened along the Spanish Town bypass in St. Catherine. The murderer says he was on his way to Ocho Rios in St. Anne when the police car hit into his vehicle. He just told me the whole thing that happened. He was traveling, he stopped at the stoplight. The police ran and smashed his car. So it started from then. It's a simple fender bender. A vehicle stopped in front of me. I stopped behind the vehicle right here, so I don't know what really happened. So last to God know. It happened so fast. The officers say they are still investigating the matter and have not yet apportioned the blame to any party. The first time he came in and he spoke to us, it was evident that he was really concerned. He, it appeared as if he was in fear of his safety. I know I can't get any justice. All my car is going to fix, all my health is going to take care of. I'm lucky that TVJ was on the scene the night of the accident. Lest the police would have charged me that night and tried to tell a lie. He had mentioned that police had threatened him at his home and they were intimidating him. He said he went to the um, legal aid lawyers. They advised him to put a tape um, camera in the house because he does DJ stuff, he knows what to do and that's what he did. Um, after installing the camera, he came to me three days later showing me some video footage of what appeared to be police um, um, you know, um, manhandling him along with his wife. It appeared they were holding him and, 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 and pushing him around in a room and they were asking him questions. I was eight months pregnant. Policeman pushed me down with my husband. That's the time I got hurt my belly. 
police wanted to kill him, so I want to save him. They came to his house and they beat him. They beat him and they beat his wife, her stomach, her back, and all of that was whales from where they beat her. And he told me that he was having so much pain from where they stomped him. He was going to the bathroom, passing blood. He said that members of the police team did not want him to continue with the case, did not want him to raise, raise his concern with the, the, the higher authorities. And that was you know, the means they were using to get him to stop. I can't get no justice from no one in Jamaica. All I know, everywhere I go for justice, in the police force, there's someone there trying to kill me, or someone there trying to set me up with the police. So, I would like the whole world to check this, listen this, and know that if I'm dead, or anything happened to me, it's the Jamaican police carry out that works or that order. The Robert Hill case perhaps is a, a nadir for Jamaica because Robert went and, and caught the people on tape. You can see them, their faces. You can see them beating him and his wife. You can see them threatening him. And he took that tape to the police high command. And they came back and killed him. It was too much. It's too much for me to bear. Up at this point, I cannot believe that he's dead, that he's gone just because of a car. Residents of Nagahead, Portmore, and lawmen remain at odds this evening as they continue to protest the police's killing of an influential member of the community yesterday. The irate residents continued their protest over the killing of 34-year-old Ezron Morris, otherwise called Dante. We want some answers! We want answers! Last year, over 250 people were killed by the police, and a large percentage of those killings were extrajudicial. In other words, they were plain murders. Of course, communities protest because it's over five killings by the police a week uh, last year. Hardly a week goes by, you don't see communities protesting vigorously and, and people crying and, and showing intense grief because somebody they feel has been killed wrongfully. They kick out the door and go straight into the bathroom and kill my son, he was murdered! The situation is, is appalling. It's unbelievable, quite frankly. The data is hard to come by, but we, we think that we have the highest rate of extrajudicial killings per capita here. And the police operate in depressed communities and with impunity, complete impunity. You do not find the killing, the, the extrajudicial killings taking place in the upper residential areas of Kingston, among the white and, and brown people. It happens in the inner city. It is in the inner city among the black, poorer people that the police uh, 